Hello. Okay. Five Nights at Freddy's, a supernatural horror film based on the video game franchise of the same name. I've never actually played the video game, so I'm going into this movie knowing nothing about the characters, the lore, the story, any of those details. So I am going into this movie as a complete outsider. So the film follows a troubled security guard who accepts a nighttime job at an abandoned family entertainment centre where he discovers its four animatronic mas mascots come alive and are prone to murder people. So the one thing that really took me by surprise with this film was the story of Mike, the, the troubled security guard who's played by Josh Hutcherson, who you might know from The Hunger Games. And it's his story, which is a very tragic and dark story, and just how the film focuses on this character's journey that really took me by surprise. And at first, I was kind of left wondering, is it because I've never played the games? And so I ended up doing some research after watching this film to sort of kind of dig into the story and the lore of these video games. And well, obviously what I discovered is the film adapts a lot of different elements from the first three games, I think. And they do switch a few things in regards to sort of characters' relationships. But a lot of what they sort of explore um, in those games, within those games, they do adapt you within the film. And I did like that aspect of the story. I was quite intrigued. I was a little bit surprised. But the film does focus on it quite a bit. And it did take me by surprise because I was just expecting something a little bit more zany and bonkers. Something more along the lines of the very fun Willy's Wonderland. And again, you know, I've never played the video game. So that does play a big part into how I felt while watching this film. But at the same time, when you're introduced to this character of Mike... I was intrigued, I was interested by this character's story and, you know, his journey and it's a very dark and tragic story and I was interested at first. So I just mentioned Willy's Wonderland because yes, it has a very, very similar premise. But this film, Five Nights at Freddy's, is no Willy's Wonderland. Willy's Wonderland was actually quite fun. It was bonkers, it was zany. It's got Nicolas Cage being Nicolas Cage. I had a lot of fun with it. I really enjoyed it. And this is what I was kind of hoping for with Five Nights at Freddy's because I was aware the story was very, very similar. The issue that I had with this film was I really felt like they didn't really know what kind of movie they wanted to make or they really kind of just struggled to meld the more darker emotional tones of Mike's story with the more absurd out there bonkers aspect of the story. So you've got these two kind of different tones where you've got Mike's tragic dark story that he's trying to sort of uncover the truth of who took his brother and then you've got that other sort of more absurd aspect of the story with these animatronics and have come to life that the, the two different tones for me just didn't quite meld and the one tone becomes quite suffocating as well as a result so the film for me personally just ended up becoming quite a slog to sit through it was a very dull and boring experience and that just really surprised me because when you kind of read the synopsis of this film or you know even if you've got some awareness of the games even knowing that Willy's Wonderland was kind of you know a very similar story you would expect this to be a hell of a lot more fun and zany and bonkers than it actually was but this was the only way I can sum this film up perfectly from my own experience is it was a slog to sit through like it's a one hour and 50 minute movie and it felt like fucking two and a half hours it was just i really struggled to sit through this um there are aspects that i liked but i just felt like this film was very awkward in its execution and setup of its story it just kind of felt like they didn't really know how to bring this story to life as a movie it, it, and it, it kind of feels really awkward as a result. It's not even that gruesome. I think that if you trim a few seconds here and there, this could easily have been a 12, eh? I'm actually surprised, thinking back on it, how this was a 15. Like, there's a couple of shots here and there of sort of the sort of the after effects of what an animatronic might have done to someone. And I think maybe that's what pushed it to a 15. But it's really not that 
gruesome or bloody or violent and again something that I was expecting more of. And as I previously said, at first I was intrigued by sort of the character's story of Mike and his journey. But I just feel like the film focuses so much on this one aspect of the story. It felt like the, the film had just stopped, like it had just stalled. And the entire f experience of this film, it just really kind of lacked any momentum or energy. Like it was a very kind of one note experience. When we do get the moments of horror with the animatronics, I kind of found them to be a little bit fun because I quite liked how these moments were set up. Like you'd get this one moment with an animatronic sort of just walking behind this fan in the background. It's just how the sort of the, the camera is set up and sort of how it's framed. And I, I really liked that. And I felt like these moments up until a point were really kind of well executed. My issue with them was they were devoid. They lacked any horror, tension or suspense. Even though I did like the ideas sort of behind the setup of these moments. And then what would, where these moments really kind of fell down for me and stumbled was how they shot the death scene. So when you've got these animatronics and they go in for the kill, you'd get a lot of this sort of camera swooping in into the victim and then you'd hear a scream and then you'd sort of go to a neck, you know, it would take you to the next scene. And that fucking really irritated me because it was like they were purposely avoiding any sort of gory, gruesomeness, violent deaths to sort of really kind of retain a certain rating. That's how it just felt. Like they'd have this really kind of well done setup and then you'd get a fucking camera that would just sort of take you into the perspective of an animatronic. It would swoop in into the character and it's like, oh yeah, okay, he's dead. And it's like, I wanted more. I really wanted them to utilize the animatronics more. I wanted to see them more in use. You, you know, you could have had this one scene in a hallway where they could have really utilized these animatronics to their full potential and it could have been creepy. But instead, they kind of resort to this fucking very cheap trick, trick with the camera. And so where you just take that perspective and it fucking swoops in and it's like, ah, oh, you know, and then, then they dead. And that to me was just very lazy and really frustrating. There is an attempt at humor in this film, but it really just falls flat. It almost, it, it felt, it's one of those aspects of the film, of one of many aspects of the movie that just stood out. It felt awkward in how they implemented sort of the humor within this film because it, it almost felt like they forgot they needed to inject some lightheartedness. So you would get that odd moment of, you know, a gag or a joke or some sort of comedic moment between some characters. And it just felt very forced and out of place because it didn't really fit into the overall movie and story and narrative. So yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's was a very disjointed film where you've got two different aspects of the story that just didn't quite meld and come together and I really wasn't sure what I was watching and what I was supposed to be feeling throughout this experience. It's a very slow one note experience that did, that did have moments of potential and were kind of fun in sort of the ideas when it, be, when it comes to certain moments with the animatronics but it never really builds to a satisfying payoff. It needed more focus on what it wanted to be but it just takes too long to get to the craziness and by the time you get to that point with these animatronics I had really just lost interest in this film and this and just sort of this story like at first it kind of took me because I was intrigued by sort of the story of Mike but then it just took so long to get to that kind of craziness and sort of that supernatural aspect of the story uh, yeah, I'd lost interest and so this was a slog to sit through. It was quite painful. As I said, there are aspects that I liked and I think that, you know, the potential was there. Like, look at Willy's Wonderland. If you haven't checked Willy's Wonderland out, please do. That was a very fun, entertaining film and, you know, you've got Nicolas Cage. Like, I fucking love Nicolas Cage and he's absolutely brilliant in that. And I don't know whether it's because I've watched that film and that's kind of tainted a lot of this for me. I'm not sure. You know, I've not played the video games as well. So perhaps, you know, I'm not that kind of emotionally involved with this universe. 
um, with these characters and stories. So perhaps that also plays a part in this, maybe. I don't know. But just from my experience from watching this one hour, 50 minute movie that felt like two and a half, it was very painful. And it lacked any horror, it lacked any tension. I felt like it could have been a little bit more gruesome. It could have utilised the animatronics more. Like this film could have really have soaked itself on sort of these animatronics and just how they use them to create the horror within this film. But they fail miserably with that aspect. So yeah, they are my thoughts on Five Nights at Freddy's. And I will be giving Five Nights at Freddy's a 3.5 out of 10. So yeah, they are my thoughts on Five Nights at Freddy's, but what did you guys think? Are you, a, are you a fan of the games? Did you love or hate the movie? Then please let me know below and let's get a discussion going. And if you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. If you want to see future reviews from just some random Welsh geek, rambling on then please hit the subscribe button it will mean an awful lot to me my next review will be for the tv series on netflix the fall of the house of asha which i am really really enjoying i just haven't quite finished it yet but i am gonna hoping to get a review up of that for you guys this week and yeah a big thank you to all my most recent subscribers i'm currently sat at 183 at the time of filming this video and I just want to thank every one of you for subscribing. It means an awful lot. Like, to just get so close to 200. I mean, I'm hoping to hit 200 by the end of the year. That's kind of my target for this year. But just the fact that there are people out there who want to just watch me for 10, 15 minutes ramble on about the things that I love in life, which is film, just means an awful lot. So, yeah, thank you so much. I do want to hit those, that 200 mark by the end of the year so if you do want to follow there's some random welsh geek rambling on you know about film tv and everything geeky then please hit the subscribe button it will mean so much so yeah thanks for watching really do appreciate it and i'll be catching you guys soon